In the previous tutorial, I mentioned that Pro Tools often works in ways that can seem weird when you first start using it. Since Pro Tools is an industry standard tool, it was built to work in industry settings, where the equipment you have on hand is more elaborate. While you can still use Pro Tools with only a laptop and USB mic, trying to figure out your setup can feel like overkill for a newcomer. So try to bear with me while I explain. This one might be a little bit longer, but only because I get asked these questions the most, and I want to cover as many bases as possible. Most computers process audio through a built-in sound card. They can collect audio through something like a built-in mic or a line-in port, and deliver audio back to you through speakers or headphones. Most of the time, sound cards are functional for casual users, but they may not be able to handle a whole lot more. Studios that specialize in sound and music production will use external devices to properly capture audio and process that information efficiently. They still need a computer to be able to edit and interact with the sound, but the computer isn't actually handling how that sound is captured and returned to you. A pretty common in-between for the casual user and a full studio is to work with an external device called a preamp. Let's take a look at one now. On the front, you have at least one audio port to take in audio from a device like a microphone or line-in cable. This is called your input. The dial here controls how much sound is collected from your input, and it affects how loud my recording will be. On the back, you have another set of connections for the output, which is typically going to be your speakers. On this particular preamp, I have an extra output for my headphones on the front. With all that in mind, let's go back into Pro Tools. I'm mostly addressing how this works in Pro Tools first, before looking briefly at the full version. Please don't skip ahead right away, since some of the information will be the same. Before we do anything, the first thing we want to check is the track we're recording to. Each track has a selection labeled I.O., which stands for Input Output, with two little dropdowns right at the top. If I click on that, I can choose to not have an input or select from either the interface or a bus. We'll talk about buses later, but notice that under Interface, I can select from options labeled Microphone. Since I'm trying to record from my microphone, I definitely want to make sure that one of these is selected. You may need to play with your options a little bit to figure out which mic is which if it's not immediately obvious. That way you know what is feeding into your tracks. Now, you don't have to have any input selected if you just need to hear what's on your track. But if you plan to record to a track, you do. We can do the same thing to figure out our output, but we really only have one main option here, and it's pretty easy to figure out where we're going. Now, if you've tried that and you still don't see the devices you're looking for, or you can't record or hear anything playing back, the first place you want to look is your input-output settings. These will be available under the Setup dropdown, but how we interact with them will depend on whether you're using Pro Tools first, the full version, and if you're on a Windows or Mac. For Pro Tools first, both Windows and Mac will have something called the Playback Engine towards the top of this dropdown. If you click on this, you can usually select the device you want Pro Tools to be looking at, such as your preamp. Just select that device from the dropdown, and your I.O. settings on the track will show your microphone and output options. Where this gets a little bit more complicated is for Mac users. Pro Tools will look at your built-in input and output, which are usually your computer's sound card, as two separate devices in the playback engine, meaning you can choose only one or the other, but not both at the same time. Fortunately, there's a quick way to fix this under the hardware option, which is also under your setup dropdown. In the top left-hand corner of this window, you'll first see all your potential input devices, which have a mic icon next to them, and any output devices, which have a speaker icon. If your device doesn't appear here, you need to research to make sure that it doesn't have any compatibility issues with your computer or Pro Tools. It should show up automatically as long as they are compatible. The third type of icon we'll see here is what's called an aggregate device, 
The word aggregate means something grouped together. And since we know that Pro Tools wants to look at one place for the input and output, we can create an aggregate to pull our choice of input and output together into a single device. This way, if you're using a different combination of inputs and outputs, like a USB mic and your computer's output, you can pair them up ahead of time so you can pick from the ones you want in the playback engine later. As a really easy scenario, let's just say that I started out wanting to use a USB mic and my laptop speakers. I'll create a new aggregate I'll call Easy Setup by clicking the plus sign at the bottom left of the window. Then I can put a check mark in the box next to the devices I want to use. You can also choose more than one input from here. If you have two microphones, like if you're recording a vocalist and a guitar, make sure both of them are checked off. Then click close when you're done. Now that we've created an aggregate, we can select it from the playback engine dropdown and click OK. Now these options are available in the I.O. dropdowns on my track. All right, for everyone using the full version of Pro Tools, your setup dropdown will look a lot different. I'm going to go a little bit quicker here since some of this repeats and most full version users have a better idea what your tech is anyway. If you're like me and don't use a lot of outboard gear, your hardware menu is pretty bare and straightforward. Again, you're looking here to make sure that your device is recognized by Pro Tools at all before you start trying to figure out whether or not you're getting sound in. You also want to make sure that you have the playback engine set to either your preamp or you're using the Pro Tools aggregate, which will usually auto set up for you in a lot of cases. On a Mac, you can edit the aggregate or create a new one by going to Utilities and Audio MIDI Setup. Finally, you also have a separate menu for setting up your IOs. There's a whole art form to this, and I don't want to touch on it. But if you need to make changes to those settings, this is where you want to start looking. All right, I'm going to end here since that was a lot to cover. Thanks for bearing with me on that one. A lot of people struggle understanding what the settings are and how to work with them. So I'm trying to lay out that foundation before we get too far. I promise we'll cover something a little less headache-inducing next time.